Today we are beginning our new series on the title Contentment. Praise God. Our proof text will be 1 Timothy 6:6 6, 6 and Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. 1 Timothy 6:6 6, 6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So contentment is simply freedom, freedom from anxiety or worry. It speaks of self-sufficiency. It speaks of independence. However, this self-sufficiency that we are talking about is at variance to the scriptural stipulations that believers hold. That's why we are talking to us on the contentment that Apostle Paul emphasized that has to do with the self-sufficiency that comes with you believing in God. Because whether you like it or not, you need God in this present world. For you to be able to scare through the schemes and the plots of darkness. Hmm. We are talking about the arrows that fly by day, the terrors by night, the pestilence that walketh in darkness, the destruction that wasted at noon days. These are forces we are contending with. If you go to Ephesians 6 verse 12, it emphasizes it more. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. Other version says, heavenly. Imagine, somebody's name is spiritual wickedness in the high places. That means the only thing they know is wickedness. They don't want to see anybody smile. They, want to, they don't want to see anybody happy. But these are the forces we are contending with. And the worst thing is that you don't even see them. Because they walk through men. Praise God. They take possession of men and begin to afflict and inflict wickedness. That's why you need God for his hand to continuously be with you. And this is why declaring independence is foolishness. And declaring self-sufficiency is pride. Praise God. Because God will always resist the proud. He will only give grace to the humble. Hallelujah. Let us, like Paul, be always mindful of the fact that we can do nothing except through Christ that strengthens us. Praise God. And there is lack of sufficiency today because people have made many things other than God their sufficiency. And every other thing the Bible says must fail. Praise God. The arm of flesh will also fail you. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 to 8. He said, Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man, and make it flesh his hand, and whose heart departed from the Lord, for he shall be like the head in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness, in the salt land and not inhabited. Inhabited. He said, Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. He said, he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So our trust will continuously be in the Lord. Remember, the Bible says, a king is not saved by the size of his army. No warrior escaped because of his great strength. A horse is a mere hope for deliverance. Despite his great strength, he cannot save. He said, but the eyes of the Lord upon them that fear him, to deliver them from destruction and to keep them alive, infirmary. They looked unto him and they were lighted. Their faces were not ashamed. Some may trust in chariots, some may trust in horses. But the Bible says, we will continuously trust in the name of the Lord our God. They will be brought down and fallen. But what? We will arise and stand upright. Let our trust continuously be in the Lord. As we are going to suffer shame and reproach. May this never be our portion in the name of Jesus. Silly facts about contentment. 
I like talking about salient facts. Because these are things that we always neglect. Praise God. The first salient fact about contentment is that it is opposed to greed, excessive or inordinate desire for gain. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things so ever thou hast because he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And the irony of life is that those that truly love money don't have money. Those that truly love abundance never have abundance. I'm not the one that said it. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10 says, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. And this is why our quest for worldly possession must not be greater than our quest for the knowledge of God. As a matter of fact, as a Christian or as a believer, you are not permitted to have these worldly possessions more than the degree to which you know God. It must be commensurate to the degree that you know God. That is the only time God can trust you with the gold and the silver, the cattle upon a thousand years. Because if he empowers a novice who doesn't know how to spend kingdom resources, it will be a waste. And God is not a waster of resources. That's why if you check the Bible, God never used anybody that didn't prepare himself. Praise God. It was always the best somehow that God used. People would just say, oh, God can use. Oh, if you don't prepare yourself, God too goes for the best. Praise God. And that's why 1 Timothy chapter, 10, chapter 6 verse 10 to 11 says, For the love of money is the root of evil. Say, which wise some coveted after. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. It added, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. In other words, when you follow after these things, every other thing that the Gentiles seek or crave for, it will be an addition. Praise God. It's the same thing that Matthew 6, 33 tells us, seek first the kingdom of God and seek to be what? Right with his kingdom laws and precepts. Then, every other thing will be added unto you. Praise God. So, true contentment arises when we consider some factors. The first factor is how unworthy we are or deserving, undeserving we are of God's mercy. Praise God. In Genesis chapter 32 verse 10, the Bible says, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast shown unto the, thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. This was Jacob speaking. He went out of his town with nothing, only the blessing. And when he was serving his master Laban, the master changed his wages ten times. He will say, any animal that you have that, that is uh, given birth to, that is, you know, strict, or that is ringed. That means it has patches. He said that will become your own. God will somehow give him wisdom to make sure that every animal that is give, being given birth, the strong ones will have patches. Laban will come and say, no, let me change it. The one that is without any, any patch now is your own. God will still give him wisdom. Somehow, he took the words of his master. Praise God. And the master also came and told him that I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of thee. But because the devil is so rebellious, you know that God has blessed you because of this man, yet you are still trying to bring him down. I don't understand. And this is what happens in many sectors, even in the church of God, sadly. People can't behold what is there and walk with. The Lord has blessed me because of thee. Yet, I'm, I want to fight the man that God is using to bless me. Instead of seeking to actually enjoy more of the blessing from God by being more kind to him. The Lord will show us mercy in the name of Jesus. The second factor we must consider is that we must consider the benevolence of God's provision. 
Remember the birds of the air do not farm or store into barns. The Bible says, yet the Lord feeds them. The flowers of the field do not spin or toy. Yet Solomon in all his glory, he said, it's not a ray like one of these. He said, if God so clothed the flowers of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe thee, O ye of little faith? That is the question. I want you to realize that the richest man in, in the world cannot feed one species of bird for one year. He will go bankrupt. One year, just one species. Yet, God is feeding thousands of species of birds every day. This is not to talk about the fishes of the sea or the beasts of the field. They are innumerable. In fact, there is a particular animal called skunk. It feeds every six, six minutes. If it doesn't feed after six minutes, it will die. So if it becomes worse, what it does is that it feeds on its fellow skunk. But yet, none of that animal, I mean, the animal hasn't gone extinct. We still have skunk tea today. Just imagine. And then you, the Bible says, much, you, are, you are more valued, valuable than these things. Yet, it's because of lack of faith. That sometimes people are saying, I don't have what to eat. I don't have what to drink. I don't have what to wear. Of course, there are levels in these things. Because the Lord, even the our earthly parents cannot empower their children beyond the level they think that they have come to maturity. You can't give your five-year-old child, you know, 10000 to go and spend. You know, yes, uh, except maybe, I don't know. But it's not possible. You can't give him your car to drive. Even if you say he has been fasting for 10 years. Or I mean for 10 months. Praise God. Because of love. Because if you give him, he will go and kill himself. So there are levels. That's why I say our level to which we have worldly possession is the degree to which we know God. That's why we should, we should quest more. We should seek more to know God. And we keep growing in these things. The more you grow, the more God releases. Because the more he's trusting you. There's no other way, my brothers and sisters. You heard what Bishop, uh, the whole Bishop Oyedepo uh, said. He said his secret is Matthew what, 6.33. On his birthday, seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing are additions. Praise God. Number three. Contentment arises when we consider how unchanging God's divine government is. The Bible says the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this sea. Say, let them that name it the name of the Lord depart out of iniquity. Say, for in the great land, they are, from the great house, they are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. Some to honor, some to dishonor. You say, but whoever purges himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and what? Prepared unto every good use. So, the factor that is most important is there is that they that name it the name of the Lord should what? Depart from iniquity. When you depart from iniquity which is a very hard thing for many the next syllabus is what? Purge yourself. It's not God that will purge you. People say oh God purge me, purge me. God doesn't purge you so to speak because say he that purges himself so you, you, you have to understand that it, 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 it's not, you, you are not supposed to begin to complain. Oh, me, I'm not gold. Me, I'm not silver. Me, I'm, 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 I'm earth. The fact is, if you are purged, even the president will prefer to drink from that wooden or that earthen vessel than the golden vessel that is dirty. Praise God. So you are now, you are the one who will purge yourself. And in the fullness of time, when you are needed, because not every time they bring out some of these precious, you know, things. Those precious commodities are kept somewhere. It's for special people. So you need to just be preparing yourself and waiting. When the time comes, when they go and bring you out, you should be clean enough to be used. Praise God. That is how it works. God is no respecter of persons. He said to who, whoever will show himself faithful, God will show himself faithful. Whoever will show himself shrewd, the Lord God will show himself shrewd as well. So show himself shrewd as well. The fourth factor we must consider is when we understand 
the punishment we deserve because of sin. And God punishes sin in four ways. Number one, spiritual death. This is when your spiritual senses are lost. You become alive to the flesh and you are dead to the things of the spirit. That was what happened to Adam, first Adam in the garden of Eden. His spiritual senses was lost. Number two, physical death itself. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is what? Eternal life through Christ Jesus. The third is suffering in this present life. This is when God opens you up to the buffeting of Satan and his cohorts. And lastly, eternal death itself. When you are separated from the life of God. The life without limitation. The life that excels. The very life of God. That eternal life, you will lose it. Praise God. We deserve nothing but punishment by death. But God, through his son Jesus Christ, has decided to show us mercy by granting us life. We must receive that life and always try to dwell in that life continuously. Praise God. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not but to what? Key, to steal, to destroy. And come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Receive that life. Praise God. Number five, contentment also arises when we consider the reward contentment itself brings. There are basically three rewards that contentment brings. Number one, it lowers anxiety. Number two, it eliminates jealousy. Number three, it removes the overly desire to have more. Praise God. The overly desire to have more. Let me run. The sixth factor, which is the last factor, is that when we keep in mind the glories that are kept for us in eternity. When you keep in mind the glories that are kept for us or for you in eternity. The fact is there are so many glories awaiting us. Maybe let's just read some scriptures. Revelation 21 verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Just in case you are going through some challenges, the tempest is hard pressed against you, The pressure is much. If you can't overcome it here, just know that in the end, you will enjoy. But our prayers that you overcome it here, right on the earth, because the kingdom of God is for overcomers. That's why the Bible says, He that overcometh shall be what? Given the keys of life. So you must overcome. It is for overcomers. Praise God. There is no peculiar challenge that is. There is no challenge that is peculiar to you. It has happened and it will continue to happen. I was telling some people humorously the other time that even if it's famine, we have not seen the level of famine that the people of old experienced as recorded in the Bible. And the Bible says in Romans 15:4, these things are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the Bible says a time came when two women the hunger was so much that they decided to eat their children. Just imagine. That is the height of, of hunger and starvation. This one, they now agreed and they, they ate the first child. When they came, when they finished that one, they wanted to eat the other woman's child now. She hid her own child. It became a talk of war. So they had to take the matter to the king. We agreed. We are going to eat our children sequentially. We have finished devouring mine. And then this woman has hidden her own. Just imagine that even the Bible also recorded also that it, there was a time of famine where see doves as in the dung of doves were, shed, were selling for 300 shekels. Like they discovered that they had proteins. Dove, their excreta. Just imagine, an ass was selling very high at that particular time. So we have not seen anything. 
Hunger was so much for even the man of promise that they had to run down to Egypt. You are still in your country. So, what I mean, I mean, you haven't seen anything. So, it's not left for you to go back and study. You say, we should not be slothful, but followers of them who what? Through faith and patience. There is a patience factor, of course, to all these things. Who through faith and patience inherited the promise. But we must be overcomers. So we should stop crying and begin to pray to be solution givers. Because it's in the midst of the famine that we, they were told that Isaac sowed in that same land. Of course, during that six months of sowing, he was still suffering some things. Of course, he was still but knowing that after six months, I will break forth. And his Bible says he continued to increase and increase and increase until the Philistines envied him. And he reaped hundredfold in that particular same year. So that means there was something that he did with his hand in the midst of famine. But it was God that gave him that inspiration. So we can become solution givers. You know, the challenge there is that sometimes to other people who are trying to overcome are easily overwhelmed by the multitude who would just feel that you know, manna will just be dropping from heaven. You know, we are not in the Old Testament again. Praise God. So it becomes a burden. But if all of us can have that mentality of beginning to think or avail ourselves for us to become solution givers or providers, I think it will be better for us. Praise God. Revelation 21, 27 says, And they shall in no wise enter into it any and they shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile it, neither whatsoever work it abomination or make it a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. The emphasis there is Lamb's book of life. At least, most of us who are children of God, who are believers, we know we have express ticket for this. Because for our name to be written in the book of life, you must make Jesus your Lord and Savior. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And if you have done that, automatically, your name is written in the book of life. Praise God. For those who have not yet given their life to Jesus Christ, an opportunity will be availed you so that you can do the same. So that at least your name will be written in the book of life. Praise God. I always tell people that the only requirement to enter heaven is just confession of the Lordship of Jesus. When you have made him your Lord and Savior, you will enter heaven. It's as simple as that. The only thing some of us are laboring for is rewards because even on the scale of God, we will not be the same. Somebody like Abraham, we have what is called the bosom of Abraham. Maybe like the whole of Abuja. Maybe you, you can stay in Lugwe, in one mansion in Lugwe. It's, it's a different thing. You too, you, are, you, you have a, a place where you can call your own bed. On the scale of God now, they are poor people. So because you have rewards, that's, you need rewards, that's why you do good deeds. You win souls, you know, you live a godly life, and then you serve. All these things have reward. Praise God. So that on that day, when your rewards come before God, He will remember you. Praise God. However, I say we must seek to become overcomers because God, even Jesus told us that in this earth, we are going to, uh, we are going to actually inherit these things. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 to 30, he said, And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house and brethren or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the world to come, eternal life. Of all these things, the emphasis for me in there is with persecution. There are many people who can't stand for anything. God is looking up to them to stand for him in that place of influence that God has apportioned them, but they can't stand for anything. They are afraid. They are the ones that first compromise. God is looking out for you in that office, in that organization. Become the light. Become the salt. Become the preservation. You cannot. Remember, if you are not standing up to those particular responsibilities, 
one of the requirements for our judgment is the persecution we're able to endure for God. It's one of the requirements that God is going to be using to judge us. So anytime you see something and you compromise, you're sort of standing for God and say, if I perish, I perish. And a matter of fact is that it's those that actually say, if I perish, I perish, that never perishes. Some of us <laughs> is where when we were teaching in some schools, we were quite hard. That's why when we were talking like this, they were there saying, Kai, Kai, that man. We were quite hard. You can't, you can't, some people will wait till when it's exam time before they were employed. You have submitted your CV for long. They won't call you. And they call, they say, you see, we didn't employ you on time. Why didn't you call me on time? Me, I'm just coming. If it must be exam and practice, I'll be leaving. I'm just coming. It will pain them a little bit. Because of the dexterity you showed, you know, they say, God, but we need this man. So they will keep you. Why they make their other plans? But you are there telling the students, if you are doing this cheating, you will not go to heaven. And some of them will come back and say, me, I refuse. That they didn't do. We'll give God praise. That is how it works. It must not be that you will do. That little word you say at that particular time is enough. It can begin to trouble them. But some people don't say anything. Just say, talk. After all, you know, affect me. So wait. That's why you can't do much for God. Praise God. The second salient fact about contentment is that it is opposed to pride and ambition. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 10 say, Only by pride commit contention, but with the way advised is wisdom. Contentment is actually a genuine offspring of humility which is fully obtained when we recognize God's capacity and capability even to provide for us God's message in the past he has been faithful to people who were before you he will still be faithful to you now because it's the same yesterday today forever hallelujah and number three when you understand how nature works wherever you see any tree any seed or any tree grow that is where they planted it or that's where it found itself and it grew there to provide shelter, to provide fruits as the case may be. And these the same fruits or places that they grew from that fruit that birds can feed on. Just imagine if they were not there. What would happen to those places? Because these are provisions. Praise God. So if nature can show us some of these things, we ourselves must be contented where God has placed us or called us. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 20 says, Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he is called. Praise God. The third salient fact about contentment is that it is opposed to anxiety of the mind. We talked about the bears of the air, flowers of the feet. If God can so clothe them, why will he not clothe you, O ye of little faith? So we must realize that contentment arises from man's inward disposition and not his outward condition. So contentment actually is more inward than satisfaction. And this is simply because you know uh, contentment is the habit or permanent state of mind. It's a habit or permanent state of mind. But satisfaction is just momentary. It's based on circumstances or happenings around us. If you have a certain level of money it's the level of satisfaction you, you get. If you have a certain level of education, it's a level of satisfaction you can get, you know. But in your heart, you still want more. You still want to have more money. You still want to have more qualification. So you are not contented, so to speak. You are satisfied at the moment. Just like somebody have eaten to his fill. He is satisfied, but he will be hungry again. Praise God. But there is someone who even though he hasn't eaten to his field, he's already contented. I'm okay. Praise God. I'm not satisfied, but I'm okay. That is where satisfaction, uh, that is where contentment differs from satisfaction. Praise God. The fourth salient fact about contentment is that it is opposed to murmuring and complaining. 1 Corinthians 10, 10 to 12. It says, neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. 
Say now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonitions upon whom the ends of the world are come. Say wherefore let him that thinketh his standard take heed, lest he falls. It's the story of the Israelites. God has shown them mighty signs and wonders. With his outstretched arm, he wrought mighty wonders. He gave different levels and types of plagues. The plagues of blood, plagues of flies, plagues of frogs, of livestock, of gnats, of hay, of, of locusts, of darkness, of firstborn. Ten deadly plagues. And yet, that was not enough. When they were going to the, 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 the Red Sea, it opened. They went in and walked on dry land. When the Egyptians are said to do the same, they were drowned. The pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. Manna was falling from heaven every day for them to eat. Waters was coming out. Quays coming for them to feed. The Lord helping them to defeat their enemies. Yet they keep murmuring. They kept murmuring. Complaining. They didn't see that God was taking them to a promised land. Flowing with milk and honey. They were just complaining. And you know what they were complaining about? Onions, garlic, cabbage. This say we used to we used to eat onions, we used to eat cabbage, we used to eat all these things. Now we are in the wilderness, nothing to eat again. That is uh, the preoccupation of many. You can imagine, they can't they can't be content at the moment. God is feeding you, taking care of you, showing you these mighty signs. You can't believe it. That's why a journey of forty days became a journey of forty years. And the Lord said. Anyone who is 20 years and above that saw my miraculous powers, none of them will enter the promised land. And they all died. And their carcasses wasted in the wilderness. It was only Joshua and Caleb of all that generation that entered because they had a different spirit. I pray that we don't murmur and complain. We should always understand that God has a perfect plan for us. See, I know the plans I have towards you. The thoughts I have towards you, as how others put it, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. There is a future and a hope for you. So, if this is your portion, all things work together for good to them that what love God, who are the called according to His purpose and plan. That should be your preoccupation. He said, "Though thy beginning be small, thy later end shall greatly increase." These are things that should keep you. Say, sorrow may endure for the night, but what? joy, comment with the money. It's a time for these things. I don't have much time. So let me just say uh, the fifth salient fact about contentment is that it is opposed to envy and jealousy. James chapter 3 verse 16 says for where envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work. My brothers and sisters, envy no one. We must realize that whatever is yours is yours. Nobody can take it away. That is what people don't understand. There is this particular scripture that helped me a great deal and helped me and delivered me from this evil that is called envy and jealousy. That is Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4. He says, No man taketh this honor upon himself, but he that is called of God, as was what? Aaron. This was demonstrated when people like Datam, Korah, and Abira arose to withstand Moses and Aaron. God was so gracious to them. He said, bring your rods. Let's keep before the, the presence. Which one? Anyone that boards, they wrote their names on it. That is the one the Lord had chosen. And Aaron's rod actually boarded and produced fruits among Yet they were still doing a lie, a lie, a lie. With all this evidence. So when they continued murmuring, Moses came and said, The earth will open up itself and swallow you. And he swallowed them with all their 150 people. He swallowed their children, their wives, everybody that pertained to their, that their clan. It opened over them, swallowed them up. In our day and time, God may not be doing things physically, but he's doing it spiritually. Maybe you are that one rebelling against your leaders. You don't know that you are, you are, you are resisting yourself unawares. 
Leadership doesn't come from man. It comes from God. You must understand that. Whether you feel the person is qualified or not, it is God that placed him there. So because of that, you honor such a person. Or whatever the person tells you, especially provided he doesn't say, go and sin. Abby, whatever is done in righteousness, you must obey. Down to the least uh, 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 leader. Maybe he's your uh, SSF uh, class rep. As small as it is there, you must respect and honor. Yes, you'll be resisting yourself. And that's why they, they ended up killing themselves. Even their innocent children, their wives that knew nothing about this. That's how sometimes some, some challenges follow people down to their children. And may this never be our portion in the name of Jesus. So let us just keep preparing ourselves for higher responsibilities in the future and factor patience into all that we do. Because without patience, we can't inherit the promise of God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 says, You have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, ye may inherit the promise. Have patience. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6 to 7 says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exhort you in due time. Casting all your cares upon him, because you know that he cares. There is a due time of exhortation. Many people are too, oh, you don't know the, 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 the forces that will meet you. Moses wasn't prepared. He met Pharaoh. He ran for his life. Don't be saying, yes, I want to be a deliverer. I want to take nations. And then you are just, you are not preparing. There's a time of exhortation. Keep preparing. Be there. When it's time, you don't need anything. It will happen on its own. Until he went to the backside of the mountain and was equipped. When he came, the Bible says he became a god unto Pharaoh. The same Pharaoh that he ran from, he became a god. That was the same thing that happened to Elijah. At first, he wasn't equipped. He went before Jezebel. Jezebel said, I swear by my gods, if by this time tomorrow your life doesn't go, you will not call me uh, Jezebel. Elijah took off. Until when she went, when he went and encountered God, when he came back prepared, he became the valiant of God. There is a time of exhortation. Lastly, I will not expand on these ones now because my time is up. Areas to exercise contentment. Number one, in the things we have. Number two, in food and clothing. Number three, in our respective callings. And then number four, in our appointed wages. It was because of these people not being contempt in their appointed wages that made even the Jews today, they are still hoping that the Messiah will come. And the Messiah have come and gone 2,023 years ago. They are still hoping because a few persons collected bribes and said the disciples stole him. He didn't resurrect. That is the present source of the quagmire of some Jews till today. They are still waiting for the Messiah to come. May this never be our portion in the name of Jesus. I pray that contentment becomes the order of the day. I didn't have time to speak much about these areas. May the Lord ministers to you in the name of Jesus. And if you are here, you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ. This is the time because contentment begins with you first coming into God. He garrisons your heart and gives you that particular toughness that you need. The Bible says you should endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. But it is not something you can do on your own. First of all, you are given that dosage before you now find to flame. Without you giving your life to Christ, that dosage will not be given you. And you will fall for everything. So if you are that one, put your hand on the chest and repeat this after me so that you will be fortified with contentment. Jesus will begin to reveal himself to you. That is the only time when you will know that he made you for a purpose and you must fulfill that purpose provided you are daily walking in it. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge I am a sinner. You said in your word, you say, if anyone come to you, 
not cast out. I come to you today. Say, accept me. Wash my sins with your precious blood. Remove my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Today, I declare I'm a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, cause this ones to be established in you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you.